Hello everybody and today I'm going to be doing a video that's a little bit different to my other videos in that primarily we're not going to be talking about AWS certifications, we're going to be talking about my experience at university studying software engineering and finance, in particular my academic records and my grades. Um, now obviously this is only a part of the uni experience or college as they uh, may call it in the US, um, but it is an important part and um, I'll sort of talk about uh, you know, what I found found most important. But let's just start with talking about, you know, each of the units I've done and uh, how I found them um, and, and whether I'd sort of recommend um, this sort of, this path, who I'd recommend it to and, uh, you know, what I've gained from the experience. Um, the reason I'm making this video is uh, to, because I find this really interesting, watching other people um, do this, the same thing, going through their um, academic record. Um, and uh, you know, I feel like I learn a lot from it in terms of people's perspectives. So my aim is to sort of give as much of my own perspective as possible and help you make your own decisions about, you know, if you've just finished high school and you want to uh, look at doing a computer science or software engineering degree, uh, especially if you're in Australia, um, you know, would you rec would I recommend the path I've taken? Um, or even if you're not, if you think of going back to uni, or if you are a self-taught developer and you want to sort of compare that to um, the, the things that you do learn at uni. Um, well, that's what this video is for. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to start with, uh, basically the degree I'm doing is five years long and I just finished the third year of it. So um, if I had been doing say computer science, uh, which is a bit of a shorter degree, generally three years, I would be finished by now um, and probably looking at, you know, a grad role or something along those lines. Um, but I'm actually in a situation where I've elected to do a four year degree, it's four years because it has an honors year. And then it's also a double degree with finance, so that adds another year on. So in the end, it's gonna be five years, and as a result, you get an honors degree and a bachelor. So I start at the beginning. Um, I started this degree in 2018, the very start of 2018. Um, and the first units I did were accounting, um, engineering design, uh, engineering mathematics, and computing for engineers. So um, you might get a bit of a theme here, mostly engineering, a little bit of commerce, um, and that's because the first six commerce units are all general commerce, so a bit of everything. And the first six engineering units are all general engineering as well. So this is a bit of a theme that Monash has. By the way, the university that I went to, it's called Monash University, it's in Melbourne. It's one of the top two unis in, in the state, um, one of the top eight in Australia. Um, and it's been generally pretty good. Um, I don't really have any complaints about it that could really be resolved by going to a different uni. So yeah, I've been pretty happy with it. So these four units that I started with, accounting, um, you can see in this academic record, I actually got a uh, 74, which was a distinction. Um, you notice the pattern here, the three distinctions that I've got, everything else being an HD, the three distinctions I've got have all been commerce units. So accounting, uh, commercial law and microeconomics. Um, and this is just generally because I find commerce, even though it's easier to learn the content, I, think, I feel like it's harder to do well. Um, whereas with engineering, you're either right or you're wrong. With commerce, there's a bit more gray area. Um, and as a result, I find it hard to, to get HDs. Um, HD, by the way, for those of you who um, don't use the system or aren't aware, um, you've got a grade, a mark from zero to 100. Um, and then the grade, um, HD is high distinction. So it's as good as you can get, it's 80 plus. And then distinction is 70 to 80, 79. Um, and then credit, pass and fail below that. So I'll kind of gloss over the first year. The key takeaways from it was that I actually came into the degree thinking I was going to major in chemical engineering because I had done chemistry in high school and I really liked it, especially organic chemistry. Uh, but it turns out it kind of wasn't exactly what I expected um, when it came to like university level chemistry. Um, and as a result, I decided that uh, it wasn't really the path I wanted to go down. And that software was actually much more interesting. Obviously, no shade to anyone who picks chemical engineering, everyone picks for their own reasons. Uh, but I personally found that, and especially around this particular unit, engineering mobile apps, um, was notoriously hated, actually. Uh, this was sort of the introduction to software engineering, and people felt like they were being forced to do software engineering when they didn't necessarily want to. But I loved this unit, it was one of my favorites. So we had to build a front end for a web application, so it was kind of misleading to say mobile apps, but yeah, it was a web like running on a mobile device. Um, and then we, my team uh, decided we kind of go overboard and actually build a back end for this as well. Um, and we had to do this presentation at the end, everyone gets suited up and, and gives a PowerPoint about what they built. And we, we sort of had a, but wait, there's more moment. And that was actually one of the highlights of that year for me um, and definitely cemented the choice to do software engineering. I'd also started doing an internship at a tech company, um, which I had started like in the middle of first year, which from people I talked to, it's actually really rare, but I, I went to a meetup. There's not another video for another day. I went to a random meetup and um, 
managed to impress someone who happened to be the CTO of this startup, so just pure chance. <laughs> um, so I ended up doing this internship throughout first year and second year, um, where I actually was doing exactly what I had learned in this unit, so like building mobile apps and building um, web applications. So yeah, it, it all synchronized really well. So that was kind of the first year. There was also the mathematics side of it. Um, so it was like engineering maths and advanced engineering maths, and that was really interesting stuff. Um, you get to the point where you're doing like three-dimensional calculus. Um, so I personally really like maths. If you don't like maths, it's probably not a great idea to do this degree because uh, you get forced to do it. Um, 2019, I started doing a bit more commerce. So I did commercial law, I did economics, um, I did marketing and management. Um, and commercial law, I actually really enjoyed, but I found it super hard. Um, so I, you know, worked my ass off and I got like 74, I think. Um, and then microeconomics, I feel like I got cheated on this one. The lecture was really strict and I went to the wrong mid-sem in that I turned up too early um, to, they had different like sessions for it. Um, and I'd been assigned to the second one, I went to the first one. Um, and so he gave me zero for it, accounted for 20% of the mark. Um, so I lost 18 marks, um, would have got 93, instead got 75. So absolute stitch up as they say. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, so that would have been my best commerce unit, but it didn't happen. Anyway, um, I did a bit more Eng this year as well. So um, introduction to computer science, we started learning about algorithms, did a bit of assembly, and I found it assembly was super interesting. Um, you go at a much lower level than you're really gonna be doing in industry unless you end up doing like embedded microcontrollers or something. Um, but because of that, you learn how computers work and how to build up basic concepts in a language like functions, for example, like what is it actually doing? It's adding things onto the stack. Um, and that was really, really interesting. I also did object-oriented design and implementation, which was basically Java and design patterns, solid principles. Um, and then in the second semester, I did operating systems, um, where we learned about all these fancy operating system constructs and how Linux works, um, and lots of C programming. And I also did software engineering process and management, where you learned about Scrum, Agile, and, and sort of how to run like an Agile project. Um, so that was a pr pretty interesting unit. Um, it was one of my worst results, um, but I actually quite enjoyed the project that we did. We had a pretty good team, um, five people, and at least three of them were like decently competent. Um, so that helped a lot, and we ended up building like a GitHub issue tracker. Um, and then I ended up actually doing a side project with a couple of those people uh, later on the next year. So that was uh, pretty interesting and pretty fun. Management and marketing, not much needs to be said. Management was kind of just like case studies, and then marketing was uh, pretty boring content, but I had a great tutor. Um, so I'm still in contact with her and she has all these random industry opportunities that she invites people to. So, so I guess that's another benefit of, um, of university having like that in-person interaction and, and you know, if you impress people, then, then they can sort of give you some connections. And then early this year, everything went, went remote. And if you look at my scores, um, you can actually tell a noticeable increase. So between uh, second semester of last year, 90, 82, 81, 82, that averages out to like 84 or something. Um, on this year, I was like 86, 98, 88, 87, 96. It averages out to like 91 or 92. So I, I made like a notable increase in my in my scores just based off the fact it was remote. And I, I actually did five units. I hope what we call overloading because four is standard. Um, and that didn't seem to affect me at all, like from a from a getting the work done standpoint, just because I didn't have to go into uni, it was all remote, it was all online. Uh, so I only went to the classes I needed to, and I honestly, I really liked that working style. A lot of people didn't like it, but I personally found it was really good. Um, and the units I did there was, the two that stand out to me were, um, were computer architecture and discrete mathematics. There was a lot of overlap. Discrete mathematics is sort of like the concepts of like how does logic work, how do logical statements work, um, as well as some other things like graph traversal. Um, and then uh, computer architecture was about how do we apply this to like, we make logic gates and then we turn these into adder circuits, we build a CPU out of that. Like how do computers work from the ground up? And I finally you know, I had this moment, it was like something clicked where I went, that was a pathetic click, let's try again. Yeah, it's better. Um, something clicked and I went, uh, how, how does a, processor actually, how does, how does it know to process the next thing? I think the best analogy is like a car engine is spinning and the fact it's spinning keeps it spinning, like the spark plugs. Um, the same thing goes on with the processor. Part of the processor's job is to keep itself working. It gets really meta and I find this a, such an interesting concept. It's like teaching a machine to think. Um, and basically all it's doing is like processing single instructions that are very, very basic instructions. Like a single instruction might be like, move this value from this part of the processor to this part of the processor. And then the next one might be like, put it into this circuit so that they can add together. Um, and from that you can build up simple computer programs, which can in turn build more complex computer programs. And yeah, before you know it, you have Google. So, <laughs> so uh, I really like that, that sort of like ground up approach uh, to learning. And it sort of comes into the next thing I want to talk about, which was like 
is this degree useful and, and is uni in general useful from like a STEM perspective from like doing IT or computer science or software engineering? Is it worth it or should you just go into the tech industry straight out of high school or straight out of wherever you are? I would say if you're like, you know, 30 plus, even maybe 35 plus and you don't have time to go back to uni, don't bother. If you want to go into IT, like there's so many open positions that you'll be fine. Um, but if you do have the opportunity to go to uni, just simply from a standpoint of like it's interesting and learning the fundamentals is very important. Um, I, I find personally the people I've worked with who have um, had the experience of going to uni and learning these fundamentals, like how a processor works and um, you know, what's an L2 cache? Like, <laughs> it's a good way to tell someone apart from like, unless they're working in hardware, from like a self-taught person's never gonna really bother to learn that. Um, whereas like, if you have the uni education, you're probably not working with this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis unless you work for Intel building processes. But um, understanding how they work is really, it's so important that because everything else builds up from there. Um, so, so that would sort of be my my, my idea around this is like, if you have the opportunity, it's probably worth it. I kind of regret doing a really long degree for that reason that, you know, there's there's so much opportunity out there, like employment wise that, that I feel like I'm sort of missing out on that at the moment, but I know, you know, it's still gonna be there in two years. Because if I had it like come straight out of high school and gone, you know, I wanna be a software engineer and didn't do the degree, then I feel like I would be missing, you know, all these fundamentals and, and, and not know how like all the basics actually work, so. Um, you know, the analogy is like it's easy to learn React when you know how a processor works. It's difficult to learn a pro how a processor works just because you know React. Um, and it's not just about processes, it's about everything involved, like the fundamental mathematics behind it, uh, databases, and uh, <laughs> really everything, uh, algorithms and data structures, um, and assembly language, and operating systems. You know, I'm just renaming all these things, but uh, yeah, like these are the fundamental things that you're not going to be working with on a day-to-day -day basis but knowing how they work is yeah it's very beneficial um finally i just wanted to sort of give an idea of the overall um result of of these scores ends up with being a, a 3.9 gpa which is probably the more common measurement used um throughout the us and probably the rest of the world um but we also use a thing called wham in australia which is just weighted average mark so that's essentially just add your or add all your marks up and calculate the average um and so that for me was 87, which is considered to be like pretty close to the top, but not quite. Um, so I probably fall in like maybe the 10th percent, uh, so 90th percentile um, in terms of mark there. So um, there's uh, people I know who have like 91, 92. Uh, generally, if they're only doing engine as well, um, it tends to be a bit higher. Like I said, commas can drag it down a bit. Um, so like I'm pretty happy with, with my mark and, and how I've gone. Um, and I also sort of balance that with like, I don't want to spend all my life just studying for uni. So. Um, you know, you spend more time studying and you probably do better, but to me, it's more worth like focusing on things that I think are practical and useful um, in, in tandem with un learning the fundamentals. So, um, you know, I've been like interning various places or working as an undergrad software engineer, uh, usually two days a week during uni and, and five days a week uh, during the holidays, which is totally something you can do um, if you can sort of demonstrate to a company that you, that you know what you're doing um, and you do that by like self-teaching a lot. Um, so some people resent having to teach themselves things like they'll come out of uni not knowing how to do front end development or like never doing CSS. Um, it's like, well, you can just teach yourself that. Um, and yes, in a way, it's kind of not great that you don't learn that in your degree. Um, but I also think it's a, the, 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 the degree is there to teach you the fundamentals and then you learn whatever you need to learn uh, industry wise on top of that, usually after your degree, but you can do it during your degree. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Um, so hopefully this video has been helpful. Um, hopefully it's given you some idea about what it's like studying at Australian Uni, um, just at least from an academic perspective. Um, and hopefully if you're about to, you know, if you're considering going to uni or if you're considering uh, what degree you should do, software engineering is a good option. It often gets overlooked. Um, I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, it teaches you about like how to, how to handle the process of, of like day-to-day, -day, like building software, as opposed to like computer science is much more um, how to algorithms and, and all that work. Like I've ch chosen a couple of electives like advanced algorithms to sort of balance myself out because otherwise I'd feel like I miss out on that by not doing computer science. But on the whole, I don't really feel like there's anything major that, I, that I'm missing by doing software engineering instead. And then for finance, I haven't really started that major yet. Um, as you can see from this list, um, basically next year I'll be uh, going on to that. Um, and then some fin finishing up some like final software engineering things like computer networks and uh, software testing, which I've just done on my own. So <laughs> should be fine. Um, anyway, yeah, hopefully that, that's been uh, useful and uh, catch you guys next time.